Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you, JD, Alana. This is a great thrill for me. Um, I want to start by saying I've been an artist, I guess, all my life. I was the, the kid who was always told, don't draw in the margins, do your homework. And eventually, somewhere between then and now, I figured out how to move the margins over. And the doodlings became my life. And the notes were in the margins. And uh, uh, architecture fit in, and it made sense uh, of it all. Uh, but I've always been doing stuff, making stuff. I was the kid always sticking things together while other people waiting for my turn to play softball. And, and I'd hide it from the other kids because it looked weird. You just didn't do that in the Bronx. Um, but uh, two very important uh, notions. I'm going to have notes. I want to make sure I say what I told him I would say. So uh, that, that really connected me with the world of science uh, uh, was about 45 years ago, Charles and Ray Eames made a movie called The Power of Ten. Uh, I see a lot of nods, even from half the audience. That's my neighbors, actually. And I wanted to make sure we had some strength. Uh, and The Power of Ten was made when there was little or no computing available. And it was this brilliant notion that uh, you would just see what we looked like as you kept changing the powers of ten. So ten to the zero, one foot, was this shot of a person, maybe his partner was next to him on a blanket. And you'd see 10 squared, you'd go back 100 feet, and you'd notice it was a blanket, it was in a park, and it would keep going. The numbers would get bigger. You'd see Chicago, the lakes, the, uh, uh, eventually you'd see the Earth. And yes, you'd keep going bigger and bigger. And the notion of our universe at the time was you'd back up through the galaxy, you know, you'd see the solar system, a lot of whirring and lots of lines, and you'd move back. There's the uh, number of galaxies, you have the, and then eventually you get to this deep, deep space with just a few little sparkly lights that I could almost imagine was a studio with guys just flipping little lights. It was brilliant, but it was powerful because it was empty, and you realize that our, our creation, our cosmos is mostly this empty stuff that's, you know, we, now we're naming it black and dark matter and things like that, but I think we still have no idea what it really is. And then you'd zoom all the way back, and for those of you who uh, ever wanted to be a math major, when you get into the minus numbers, you get small. So 10 to the minus 1 brought you right to the surface of the person's body, the skin, and as the numbers got larger in the negative, you'd get down to uh, the uh, bloods, the arterioles, the cell structure, uh, eventually to these things. And those of you who grew up on Rocky Jones Space Ranger, that kind of dates me. You'd get these little spinny little things that look like nucleuses with these big electrons flying around. And the closer you got, the more you realize that, again, like that notion of deep space, it was mostly empty stuff with this energy uh, creating this stuff, these bits of light moving around. That changed my whole worldview. I won't do that again, I promise. Uh, of, uh, of things, and it affected what later came to be what I'm doing largely in my art. The other thing, as you're seeing now, there's this really neat, and this is it. I kind of peek early in terms of sexy slideshows. She had a great show. This is uh, uh, from the Derby Instrument. Uh, from the satellite Kobe. Kobe is cosmic background explorer. Uh, John Mather, who at Goddard, yes, I'm part of that, uh, uh, won a Nobel Prize for discovering this uh, bit of uh, uh, white flash in the center of what is the near space, the galaxy, and the deep space, the cosmic background, is this white flash that they've identified as the aftermath of the Big Bang which is very exciting. The idea that you can go back 13.7 or something million, billions of years, and you're at the beginning, uh, and before that, science stops, which is also fascinating, because we all think we know stuff. And then you go, well, what happened You know, 13.8 billion years ago? I did it, I'm sorry. Uh, is, it's what to do. And it was fascinating to me. And then he called the book that he wrote, uh, First Light. And I'm fascinated by the idea of light and radiance. And that, I think, carried me through uh, my life. And as you know, we're not simply uh, 
scientists or simply heliophysicists, or well, in her case, she's got a lot of other things too. But we have all these complexities and layers, uh, and uh, you know, it, it actually was part of my movement towards being a yoga teacher, a yoga student, a yoga teacher, uh, and uh, going to architecture school, a fascination with form and 3D uh, nuances. And a lot of it always had this thematic notion of what did light do to things? What was things? And I'm thrilled to know that everything eventually is some gradient of light. And as Jenna put it so well, there's so many other gradients that we don't even see that at Goddard we get to break down and make it visual. So <clears throat> with that, far more heady than my actual stuff, these are the things that I'm surrounded with uh, at, at NASA. These are the things I see. And I'm part of a very, very small group of people. There's, I think there's four architects. Uh, if we were ever meeting in the room at one time, I think we probably should have one sit outside so if you know, something happened, we'd still have an architect. Uh, but uh, there's 7,000 of us there. Uh, and uh, this, and it's still happening. We're starting to catch up. This is from that movie Prometheus, which is uh, the, uh, an amillary, in a sense, a 3D amillary. You're walking into it. It's a notion of the, of the universe that puts you right in it. And I just thought that was so great. I had to show it. Actually wrote and got permission to use these. And the guy looked at me and wrote to me and says, well, I have to use it. It's not a problem. So, but basically, I'm fascinated by a couple of things. And then I'm going to show you some bits of work. Uh, what, that which is the cosmos, and you've seen a couple of images like that, uh, and those tools that offer guidance, and they're physical and metaphysical tools. I think we're always looking for some sense of direction. This is a, an early, early compass. It's even before they invented needles, I guess, but it was, this was used for direction. Oops, you have to be up here. And these types of things, uh, that some of them even familiar, we get into the 1600s, 1700s, all were offering ways of somehow understanding where we were, or maybe where we were going. And I always thought that was very powerful also, and it had a very powerful influence on what I do as a form maker. I'm very free, I, free to do what I want, uh, as even Jen, I was surprised to know that she does things uh, uh, you know, adds things, adds color. I knew the color was added, but I didn't realize it changed that much. And I'm allowed to interpret, I guess, as a sculptor. So there's three types of things you're going to see, which is my meager excuse for not explaining each piece. There's things that suggest the cosmos, things that suggest our place in the cosmos as the traveler, the little prince kind of hopping from planet to planet looking for home. And uh, in some way, the tools uh, or navigation devices that get us there. These last two, in fact, are, if you saw that first image of the Kobe image, these types of things just come right out of that. So maybe in the end, I'm like the artist in the field with the little bench and the little easel uh, looking at nature and uh, uh, using it and interpreting it. So these types of things uh, come through. Uh, and uh, they suggest that. And you'll see that one theme that I'm suggesting. It's sort of like hoping you know, to bring you along, because I always wonder if people look at this stuff and they go, honey, let's go eat. I mean, this is OK. Uh, is uh, uh, the idea that there's light, that it takes light, that all of these are uh, transparent and translucent. And they all want to suggest both. And there's a fourth thing. I'm sorry. I said the big cosmos. But again, from that Power of 10 movie, the idea of the micro sphere, the tiny sphere, the tiny cells. So it's not always about the, the notion of planets or asteroids. And here, in fact, the idea of conception uh, comes in too, because there's some videos we've seen at NASA which look like they should be X-rated, and they're the formation of galaxies. And it's just incredible, this idea of how life is played out in the celestial, uh, uh, notion, in the celestial world. This was, I made this after my son was born. And it still comes back to this idea. It's em embryo, the idea that there's this uh, seed of life in the hand beyond. Uh, I even thought, well, what would happen in God's workshop? Well, he would be busy making these spheres. So I have a lot of construction things that suggest that. Maybe architecture creeps back in. And uh, 
Here too, while it's a little bit of a stretch, is uh, I'm very fond of the whole idea of our own building block, the idea of the uh, uh, DNA uh, structure, and that comes through too. I thought I'd toss that in because that's again a part of this. I'm uh, so what's that? Is the first line uh, Willie somebody Willie somebody gets unstuck in time? It's a great line. Right, right. And it's a Vonnegut line, which he can't stay in the present. He blinks, he's in the future. He blinks, he's in the past. Uh, and you'll see through these, um, these uh, the devices. And the sphere, that little spheroid, uh, it shows up a lot in South Indian uh, uh, religious pieces, they, the, the Shiva Lingam, which is uh, more properly... Uh, identified as a, a core of energy, and more, more recently, only about maybe uh, 1,500, 2,000 years ago, it became this idea of a phallus and sexuality, but in fact, it was almost sort of like our core, and so uh, that shows up quite a bit, and all of these uh, sun signs and yantras are all, again, from uh, the southwest and uh, south India uh, it almost suggests that I might be good with materials, but don't have any original thoughts. So that's uh, this idea of the Buddhist prayer wheel. I, I, I borrow from anything that can, at the very bare minimum, have some connectivity visually without having to read anything about it. And I think that's very important that as an artist, you can look at something and appreciate it or not, but not need to go read a, a paragraph or a book that explains what it is. There's a few pieces here that... Uh, uh, reflect my total enthrallment in the shots of the earth from satellites. We're so, you know, we're so lucky at Goddard, and they have all of this stuff on walls, and, you know, these things, these videos, we can see them all the time. And uh, we get to do things, and I found myself entering a show about water and call this the endangered species, you know, and put water behind bars. And uh, uh, this is, by the way, glass and resin, it's a urethane resin and it's a metal mesh. The resin is what has the color. The glass is tempered glass. It's repurposed, meaning it used to be a bank door or something else. And uh, you can't reuse tempered glass, at least not as a whole sheet. You can't cut it. Uh, so a few shots that show this. And uh, I think there's a metaphor here that comes through. Um, and it's not the prime reason why I'm here and talking about it, but the idea that as a, an explorer in outer space, we're also inner explorers. We, we sometimes, uh, hopefully we're conscious of that, but I think we all are. We don't have a choice. We have a journey to make in this life, and uh, I find that making this stuff kind of helps, and I think a measure of my success is if people find a moment of self-reflection, but that's kind of heady and, and it's asking a lot, but uh, aim high, I guess. These are shots to prove that I didn't buy this stuff in Ikea. <laughs> uh, so again, and you'll see uh, as I'm wrapping up here, and I don't know if JD's watching his watch, but basically it, it all comes back to this idea of uh, conception, uh, which is goes back from here right to uh, the Kobe shot and uh, John Mather, uh, and I was fascinated to, sh I've never shaken the hands of a Nobel laureate, and I, uh, he looked more of a, a deer, like a deer in headlights than uh, I'm feeling at least right now, you know, but uh, it's uh, fascinating. So that probably is the sum shot. It's, uh, not a, it's the idea that eventually we get to the cosmos within us, and uh, uh, it's about the light and maybe about the joy in finding it. Thank you very much.